Have you ever been in a mayfly swarm? Well, they look a little bit like dragonflies with like a long body, but they're smaller and thin. I got caught in a mayfly swarm on the highway. I was on my way coming home from a gig and it, don't worry, we were social distancing, masked up and everything. Like we were trying to be as safe as humanly possible. We were trying to be safe, trying to be as safe as humanly possible. And that went fine. It was my second gig during COVID, but I was on the highway and all of a sudden I see traffic and slow down going about 25, 30 miles per hour. And I'm surrounded by bugs. Like if you grew up in the church and you read about the Egypt, the plagues on Egypt in Exodus, then yeah, that's a little bit like that. Just my car was caked in them. There are so many dead mayflies that they piled up. You could see the car tracks in the highway. There are so many dead mayflies that it looked like dirty snow. I'd never seen anything like that before. And so as I stand around and or sit in slack jawed awe and terror, Somebody that was driving next to me, I guess who was trying to merge, a uh, semi, again, we're going 25 miles per hour tops, yells at me, says, hey, asshole, you gonna let me over? It made me think about theory of mind, the way that we think other people think. And while I'm sitting in basically weather, I'm wondering who in the world lowers their windows to yell at another driver in the middle of a, an insect swarm. I have no idea who he was, where he went after I chased him down to flip him off because I can be petty too. I want to remind you, and I know that most of you guys know this, even if you don't actively think about it, but none of us are mind readers. None of us know what the other person is going through, what their day was like. We can get so caught up in righteous indignation, like we are justified to be angry because X. And sometimes our anger, especially depending on the circumstance, doesn't make things actually better. What are your goals? If you find yourself in a conversation in this really, really social and politicized climate that we have, especially conversations that you've had over and over and over again, the truck driver, probably was throwing baggage at me. You have to be careful not to do that. You see something that you disagree with, you see something that you know is wrong. You can't throw the baggage of every single conversation that you've ever had at the person whose meme you don't agree with or, or whatever. That's not a very good way to be human. It's not really a good way to convince anybody or to, because I, I hope that all of this is to convince somebody you're right, you, you feel like you're right, and you wanna make the world a better place by informing as many people as possible how to be right. Well, information, unfortunately, is not the only thing that you have to consider. Even I, as a person that exists in some way, shape, or form on the internet, have to be concerned about being convincing. I have to show you guys with my playing or how what I say you should do helps, helps me, helps me navigate through musical situations. And that has to be a convincing enough case, not just so that you listen to me, but hopefully that you'll listen to me in the future, that some small percentage of you that will want to take lessons from me. And so, yeah, sure. I mean, I could be extremely preachy, which I'm sure I've been, but I have to be convincing. So, and, and not just to the people out there, not just to you guys that are already on my wavelength, that already agree with me but hopefully I can win some people over with certain things like slowing down, taking your time, counting out loud. All of these things are values that I hold. I can't look at a drummer and say, hey, look, you need to do things my way because the way that you're doing them sucks. You suck right now, go practice. That's not a very, it's not a very attractive thing. It might be true, but it's not very convincing. And which is more important? Which is more impactful, I guess? Which is more impactful, if something is true or if something is convincing? So I'm just gonna leave you with that question because I thought it was interesting. 
So it's been a while because things have been weird. My computer is working probably about 50% of the time. I knocked over my tripod with my Blackmagic camera on it and I'm waiting for that to come back. So the look is going to change yet again. I'm still working on lighting, all of that stuff. I'm learning how to format PDFs properly and I'm behind on my correspondence. So if anybody needs to reach me, if there was something that I was supposed to do, <laughs> please reach out to me. I promise you that like I'm over here trying. I really am. Um, so please be patient with me. Hopefully now that all of that stuff is out of the way. Let's talk about Septuplet Swing. So I said that I was going to talk about syncopation. So it's going to take me some time to do my syncopation lesson, especially if I'm going to do the septuplet stuff. I have to map out all the conversions and how you do certain things. So I'm sure that you remember right, left, left, right, right, left, left kick. I am going to show you guys one of my favorite concepts to work on to push any, any pattern that you're working on sort of into the stratosphere. And what I call this concept is extensions. You could think about any pattern that you're using, like a chord. So you have C, E, and G as a C major chord. Anything that you add onto that, you're extending that chord, right? So if you put a B on that chord, you have C major seven. If it's B flat, C seven. If it's a D, an octave above, it's a C nine, so on and so forth. And, and so you can use those top notes to change or to add complexity to a, a chord. I, I do that very similar thing with patterns. First to note, if you can't play the pattern, learn the pattern first. Like you should not be pushing and, and extending things that you can't do. So the root C, A, G, or in this case, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, kick, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, kick. The first thing, is can we play it? Can we play it? I mean, play it, play it. Can you play it around the drums? Can you play it in different subdivisions? Can you use the meta patterns concept to outline other stickings with that one pattern?
then let's talk about extensions. What I like to do is to take linear patterns of long and odd amounts of notes and just see where they fall, what happens. I'm gonna show you guys two extension things. I'm gonna show you a, a what happens to the GAD pattern and how that sounds if you add three notes to it and then five notes to it. So you will have an 11 note and a 13 note pattern respectively. Now that you're extending the pattern with two different things, you can split up the right and the left concept through the pattern. So if you have the GAD thing, which is eight notes, and then a five note pattern, right, left, right, left kick, you can play the first part of it left hand lead, the second part right hand lead, or the opposite. And so you have four different ways you can play that combination of, of patterns. And that changes because I feel like everybody sort of has a natural tendency that they prefer with how they move around the drum set. And as soon as you start doing things that you would normally do right hand lead, left hand lead, it sort of changes your physical proximity to the drum set based on the amount of notes that you're playing. And I dig that. It's a it's an instant difference without really being all that different. Once you learn how to play all of the combinations of rights and lefts, then you take both of those patterns through as many subdivisions as you can. It would be helpful at this point to be able to play the five note pattern, the three note pattern, and the eight note pattern in all subdivisions that you were concerned with. So I, I hope these things are still helpful. I'm trying to become a little bit more streamlined with the way that I present material. There are some things that I really want to talk about, but I'm going to have to... <laughs> but I can only work as fast as my technology wants to agree with me. And unfortunately, I am addicted to aesthetics when it comes to the way things look. So I could have easily done this on my iPhone or my iPad, but I don't know. Let me know. Let me know if you, you actually care about all of this stuff and the lights and all that stuff, or you just want me to get on no matter what and show you something interesting. I'm sure I know what the answer is, but but we'll see. Thank you guys for being patient with me. If there's a correspondence, like if I, if you sent me a message and I didn't respond or I responded and suddenly stopped, it's just due to the hecticness. Please reach out again. I still have a lot to learn about all this stuff. So I appreciate your patience and uh, I hope everyone is doing well and I hope to see you guys soon.